Hello, my name is Randy Scrapper. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about normalization data services, the importance of it, and how it is configured. Today we're going to talk about what the normalization data services are and go through the guided setup. Let's take a step back and look at the core company table. The core company table is referenced throughout your instance in many different ways. It could be, sorry, it could be a service provider, it could be a customer, a manufacturer, a vendor, or even an internal company. Your tools that you have out there, discovery tools or your other integrations, will bring back companies in, in different ways. So let's look at some of the different ways that Dell can be reported. So these are just some of the different ways. And there are hundreds of different ways that Dell can be reported, but these are just a couple of them. But at the end of the day, and for reporting purposes, as well as reconciliation, we want to normalize that data on just one value. So again, normalization data services help maintain the consistency for table fields that re refer to the company name. Tables related to configuration items and assets usually contain columns referring to the company, such as vendor or manufacturer or even shipper. These names are reported differently and with this inconsistency can, re can uh, cause problems in reporting and reconciliation. When we install this plugin, there are two new tables that are created that we might want to take a look at. The first one is normalization companies. And this is going to be a list of all the companies that have been normalized. Next is a normalized mapping. And this is where it takes all the different variants of the company's names and that and map it to what the, uh, the correct uh, normalized value. And normalization data services, they have a guided setup and we highly recommend using this. It is a simple, uh, easy way to step through the different tasks that needed to be completed in order to get this set up properly. I do want to call out uh, step three and to review the skipped reference qualifiers. By design, some of the reference qualifiers will need to be reviewed and updated to ensure that they are needed in your instance. If you identify reference qualifiers that are needed, you'll need to add a condition normalize is true. Reference qualifiers can be updated manually or through a script. Now let's jump into a demo and take a look. I'm going to go into the navigation screen. I'm going to type in normalization or start to type it in and you'll see it under user administration normalization data services we're going to go ahead and hit the guided setup so from here you'll see all the the steps that need to, all the tasks that need to be done now each one of these uh, are set up to configure it's going to take you right to the spot to either verify um, that the plugin or it action has been taken or allow you to do an action to complete. In this one, it's for verifying the plugin was active and we do see that it's active. So we can go ahead and close this and mark this as configured. The next one is downloading the data from the repository of all the vendors names and the mappings to it. We click this and we'll go ahead and start the download. And this download sometimes takes up to an hour for the first time. Once it is completed, close 
and mark as completed and move on to updating reference qualifiers. Here you'll go ahead and start this update. Again, this might process might take a couple minutes to uh, update all the reference qualifiers. Once it's completed, they will show you the reference choir qualifiers that were skipped. As we mentioned before, you'll need to review these reference qualifiers to see which ones are needed. For example, this contract one, the, the customer, if you're going to need this, you would simply come in here and add the additional reference condition qualifier. So we're going to have this customer equals true and we're going to come in here and say normalize is true and go ahead and update this. And that is how you update a reference, the skipped reference qualifiers. Now I do recommend going through all these and there are you could do it manually or you can set up a script to do so. Once we get done with this, we'll mark this as complete. The next step is to review our normalization properties and to select the ones that we want to have. So as we see here, um, we want to make sure that we're, all these are checked. Reference qualifiers for all the tables, uh, reference company need to be normalized. Uh, enable business rules to automatically normalize the manufacturer. Uh, enabling uh, normalization on the manufacturer for discovery. So these are all the properties that we would want to make sure that we have. So we'll go ahead and make sure they're all clicked, hit save, and then we'll go ahead and close this, mark this as complete. Now the next three steps are normalizing first the configuration items, then the configuration item models, and then we'll normalize uh, the software asset management fields. So first we'll go into the configuration items. We'll hit update. Let this run. It usually takes a few minutes. Once it is completed, hit close and mark as complete. Go to the next. close and mark as complete. Now let's sc scroll down to the normalization software asset management. Take a second before you normalize it, take a look at all the fields that is going to be normalizing either uh, in asset software asset management foundations or professional uh, or throughout the application when you're talking about software asset management. So we'll go ahead and configure this the same way. We'll go ahead and start the update and let this process as well. And once this completes, we're gonna ahead and close this and mark this one as complete. And we have just completed the guided setup for normalization data services. Now, there are two additional tables that I want to do want to call out to you. Uh, this is the normalized company names. We click into this, we can see all the company names that were normalized. And then the normalized mappings will show you the mappings for each of those normalized names. So let's take a normalized name. We, we use Dell Inc. And let's just type in Dell and see what we get. So there are 492 entries or different ways that Dell has been reported in our system currently. Uh, and we normalize all those ways until Dell Inc. And that way it 
will improve our reconciliation as well as our reporting. So let's just wrap things up. You know, today we talked about normalization data services, normalizing the core company table that is used throughout your instance. We showed you how to use the guide up setup to ensure that all updates are captured and updated. We highlighted uh, reviewing your reference qualifiers to determine which ones are needed and showing you how to add a simple condition if they are. And finally, uh, we showed you how to look up the normalized company names in the mapping to all the, its variants. If there's any other additional information needed, please reach out to ServiceNow product documentation. Thank you very much.